British people have made a choice, but I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its next destination. One of the contenders in the UK Labour Party's leadership race, Owen Smith, has sparked controversy, uh, this by suggesting the Islamic State terror group ought to be brought to the negotiating table. There are historical links between uh, Corbyn and Trotsky in that in the 80s he used his parliamentary position to call for the complete rehabilitation of Trotsky and he urged the Russian state to recognize uh, Trotsky's achievements. Once an underdog, he's now a force to be reckoned with in the country. We head to Liverpool, a city with a long history of struggle in support of the working classes. That the unity and solidarity of the working class of Liverpool has not been broken. It was here that the far-left militant group gathered pace in the 70s and 80s, taking control of the city council, until its expulsion from Labour, following resistance from the political establishment. The Labour Party national leadership has moved against the militant tendency in Liverpool. If the NEC uses this report, as I said, for bans, prescriptions and expulsions, we will campaign against that. And we are convinced that when they hear the real ideas of militants, and not as they're distorted in the media, the ideas of socialism, we will get the support of the rank and file. Joining me now is the General Secretary of the Socialist Party, Peter Taft. When I talk about revolution, I talk about a movement of mass movement of working people to take power and to take the resources of society into their hands. Bernie Sanders in the US spoke about the need for a political revolution. In my opinion, the movement around Jeremy represents that in Britain. An would attempt you... to mobilise to take power okay. away from the ruling class. Some would say he's entered the world of real politique. He's got to think about people who would be voting for him in the future. I think there's a huge constituency of people who uh, would be more likely to vote for him if he sticks to those bold policies. You know, £10 an hour minimum wage, the support for the NHS, uh, against privatisation, in favour of nationalising the railways, all of those things, if he isn't cowed by the right wing of the Labour Party because, you know, there are voters have deserted the Labour Party as they've been dragged in a certain direction by Tony Blair and uh, New Labour and yeah, Corbyn think... offers the chance for something different to that and that's why he won such huge support from people who weren't in the Labour Party at that point and that, that's the, the potential that there is to, to win support from those people. But another war has been raging in the run-up to the vote and that's the one inside Her Majesty's official opposition. Anti-war demonstrators protested in the constituency of Stella Creasy, the Labour MP for Walthamstow in North London. And on Twitter this morning, left-wingers are calling on the 66 Labour MPs who backed military action to be deselected. Well, we're joined now by Nancy Taff, a member of Waltham Forest for Corbyn, who is active in Stella Creasy's constituency. Welcome to The Daily Politics. You would like to see Stella Creasy deselected, is that right? Yes, I would. Um, I'm a member of the Socialist Party and I am active in Waltham Forest for Corbyn. And one of the things that we're arguing for is Stella has called a meeting this weekend in her constituency and we will be putting a motion to that meeting calling for her reselection, calling for her resignation, for a vote of no confidence because of her role in voting for this war. This is the section of people who wanted to come along today to see if they could make up their mind. <laughs> so, uh, OK. Those people in the undecided section have moved and swelled the ranks of the Jeremy Corbyn supporters. I don't know why we've been focusing on what was wrong with the Blair and Brown governments for the last six years. In the past... Jeremy, I don't think she got the unity memo. <laughs> Capitalism, comrades, is not the enemy. Money's not the problem. Business isn't bad. The private sector is what generates the money to pay for our schools and hospitals. The real world is more complicated than that.
striking over the uh, association of colleges refusal to sort of give us a pay rise this year they've frozen our pay for another year on average we've lost about teaching staff four to five thousand pounds over the last six years um, we think that's wrong and that's why we're striking today we've both come out uh, unison and ucu we represent workers in the same uh, place for f education and uh, we've got the same issues really so it makes sense Somebody come in, help me carry this load I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need Well I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need Well I don't know if I'm walking on solid ground Not safe, not bad, not safe, not bad We're here today to unfortunately demonstrate to the government again that this contract is unsafe and unfair and that we can't, ex we can't accept it. They're not listening to us through any other means and so we've had to stage another walkout today. It's been the saddest day for, in my professional life and that, I think that feeling is shared by most of my colleagues. We're here to make certain that steel is still very much on the agenda. We're taking our message to Parliament that we want our politicians to understand that we're going nowhere until we've got a deal and a secure future for our industry. There's steel workers from right across the country here today, from Wales, from Yorkshire, from all the Romanian plants which are faced with closure because of the crisis in the steel industry. And we're also calling for nationalisation to save the steel industry. And it's a demand that's gone down really well today. People taking leaflets and buying copies of the socialist paper. Uh, Shane Call is from Batalba and a fit down the coke ovens. I think nationalisation over anything. It's ridiculous selling off all the companies. I think the, com the, the country should own everything. And I think that the privatisation is a waste of time. I think it's disgusting. It's all the corporate companies taking everything over what the country should own themselves.